My name is Patrick Malampi. <clears throat> we started 128 Technology about four and a half years ago. Uh, over the last four and a half years, we've raised uh, $67 million. You probably haven't heard of us. We, we haven't been in the stealth mode per se, but we did spend three and a half years uh, heads down building the product that you're going to see today. We um, started the company with the name 128 Technology to reflect the origins of uh, IP networking, which arguably started around the, the suburbs of Boston, uh, BBN Laboratories, some of the first work done there for the ARPANET. And um, you know, being based on 128, which is the highway ring, that's where we got our company name. And really, you know, you have all these engineers starting a company, sitting around week after week trying to think of a name. It's the most unproductive thing at all. So you had to just settle on a name. So that's our name and what it means. Our founding team, uh, I'd say around 40% of the employees of the company, came from a company called Acme Packet, which made session border controllers. The company was successful, went public, uh, had multi-billion dollars of uh, market cap, sold to Oracle uh, in 2013. Uh, the session border controllers were a special kind of hardware-based network equipment, which uh, actually dealt with a lot of the networking issues that occurred on, at, at the layer three and uh, layer, layers below the, the application layer. And we became experts in all of the problems networks cause. And that's when we were motivated to try to fix some of those problems. Um, so what we, some of our foundational beliefs when we started the company were that overlays are probably a really bad thing. I mean, they're, they're, they work. Uh, we can't deny that, but as these overlay networks, instead of a seven layer stack, you have a 14 layer stack. You have people talking about protocols and standards for connecting the underlay to the overlay. You have people gathering st statistics in the underlay or the overlay, and people running routing protocols in both layers. And we said, gee, is this, the, is this a, a good situation? Is this a, it, and then we thought about why people do it, and the fact that they build these uh, virtual overlays so that they can connect at, uh, in a seamless address space, uh, private networks one to another, and uh, both the IPv4 and IPv6 internet. And they do this so that they have anywhere to anywhere connectivity between everything. And then they put all this other equipment in to actually prevent people from talking to each other and to secure the network and to figure out who can talk to who, when, why, and, and how. And so we just thought that's a little bit of madness. So what you're going to see today, I think, is probably one of the most innovative uh, companies in the networking space. We, we believe we are. We're told by most of our customers that when we first pitch to them our solution, they say, wow, we, we've never heard of anything like that before. I think you'll be making, the, I hope you'll be making some of the same comments. The thing that is amazing is how much innovation has occurred in the compute area and, and I'm sure people talk about this a lot, and in the storage area, and whether or not the networking area has been held up or hasn't had that, that huge amount of uh, innovation that we've seen in, in storage and compute. Uh, arguably, many of our existing routing techniques and schemes uh, aren't really that much changed, and maybe that's why we needed to build an overlay. We believe with software intelligence, to, for the first time, there's a chance to innovate. And if you can suspend your um, disbelief and uh, let us present to you our approach, you may, uh, you may actually agree with us. So our recipe for innovation is one cup of Lisp, and I will say Dino Farinici is on our, on our advisory board. Um, so add one cup of Lisp, Add one cup of name data networking or ICN, add one cup of um, IPv6 segment routing, and then one cup of security and stir it, our, stir it all together for three and a half years and you, what you're going to see is what we're doing here today. So with that, um, I, I'll, I think I've covered all of this. We have a whole bunch of patents, about 100 employees based in the 128 highway ring of Boston. Uh, our routers are session smart, which sounds like something that is religiously uh, bad for stateless packet routers. But I think at the end of this presentation, hopefully you understand what we mean by session smart and why we think it, what we're doing is a good thing. And we have uh, customers between 20 sites and 5,000 sites. Uh, we do have about 60 plus customers, 65 or so plus customers. Um, 
and the founders have been involved in multiple startups, East Coast startups. So uh, the $67 million funding that we have, I'd say 50 or 60% of it's from the employees themselves who are actually working every day, who believe deeply in what, what we're doing. So I with the, uh, ask one question sure. for clarification. You came in and you said that overlays are probably a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And then you said our overlay is is your product an overlay as well? No, uh, we we don't have set. We we, own, we we absolutely avoid the notion of an overlay network. Although, arguably, if you really want to split hairs, uh, our, our our logic is overlaid on top of the of the current IPv3 layers. So. Uh, in a sense, we get into arguments with Dino Farinici. We are an overlay, we're not an overlay. Let's just say that, um, that, that we're not encapsulating and we're not tunneling. Let's just say that. But it could be considered an, over, an overlay technique, okay. so to be fair. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah.